Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to A Place in Space. It's Tuesday. There's a stack of gorgeousness here, which is what I'm going to waffle to you about for the next couple of so minutes. Let's do it. Amazing Spider-Man 12 is out now. So you've got Gold Goblin front and center proper in Amazing Spider-Man. Now, there is a one-shot due for one Mr. Gold Goblin due very, very shortly, I believe. Or it may be a mini. I will come back to you on that one. But let's move over to Kieran Gillen for a second because he has been, shall we say, reinventing a lot for the last two months. Part six is here for all things Judgment Day, and you've only got one more to go after this. Although this is part six, you also have the Omega issue due very shortly where everything will wrap up proper. So do not miss that one if you've been following the whole series as a ensemble, really, because it has spiraled through Avengers, Eternals, and all the minis as well. Strange Academy's finals is now here. Now, obviously, the first series took on a lot of the new sorcerers that Marvel introduced, and Scotty Young writing is um, back this time. Also with her Humberto Ramos still on magnificent art duties. I don't think I really need to waffle on too much about Humberto Ramos at this point. It's been a Marvel staple forever and for many reasons the man does fantastic looking stuff. That will no doubt introduce a whole bunch of hot new characters as did the first series and will probably sell out issue to issue to issue. If you're hunting don't wait too long for that one on pre-order because that will disappear. Moon Knight Annual Number 1 that comes to you from Jed McKay. Now ticklingly this features Werewolf by Night which, uh, if you know anything about the origins of Moon Knight, should raise a smile or two. But yeah, that will be a nice extended one-shot story which wouldn't fit into the overall Moon Knight storyline. I'm going to move over a few for a few minutes to DC now because you've got Batman, Gotham Knights Gilded City. Now, this looks very cool for a number of reasons. Firstly, if you're just waiting for the game, then every issue will have a little code inside which gives you a new kind of skin, issue to issue to issue. If you get all six issues, then there will be a seventh skin as well at the very end of it. Very cool. However... Greg, Greg, Greg Capullo, he says when he's not slurring, is also illustrating this issue. It's sealed, so I can't actually show you it right now. But trust me when I say Greg Capullo is absolutely the boy you want illustrating your Batman books. In fact, he's teaming up with uh, Todd McFarlane all over again to do that wonderful looking Batman Spawn one shot you very soon as well. But for a number of reasons, this looks wicked. I mean, it's set in modern day Gotham and 1847 Gotham there's a virus happening in both which may sound a little bit familiar in what's happened in recent years and times I know but trust me that'll be worth so get involved in that one if you wish set involved sorry set within modern Gotham you've got punchline Gotham game now this is quite violent I wasn't quite sure how violent they would go the answer is very I'm going to flick to a slightly less violent page there but she's back she's out of prison she wants Gotham I quite enjoy Punchline as a character. I think she's rather refreshing and definitely a breath of fresh air for all things Joker. So, very cool. Catwoman Lonely City. Now, that might be a blast from the past for some of you because I know it's been a long time. Issue 4 is finally here. When I say long time, I think it's been a good four months since the last issue. Don't quote me on that, but it's been a while. All right, so that all wraps up now. Selina Carl is... Should we say aging gracefully? There's a lot of crime still happening, but it's been, if you haven't caught up with it yet, trust me when I say it will make a beautiful hardcover graphic novel because DC do that stuff so well. But this is quite an emotional read. It's not light, it's really quite heavy. DC have done it very well. Let's get heavier for a second. Now, Paul Dano is a name that many of you will recognize if you've seen the recent Batman movie, and of course he played the Riddler. He's also very much a writer. Part of the condition for him playing that role is that he really wanted to write this, which was the story about how the Riddler became to be, which, if you've seen the movie, is not a particularly pleasant experience. It's full of trauma and grit and emotional heft. After flicking through it, this is dark. Very much in vain with the movie. You've got Stefan Subic, who's a new coming Serbian artist, doing all the illustrations on that. DC are releasing that under Black Label. That looks delicious if you're a fan of all things of the night. Cannot wait to sink into that one. That looks really quite shocking and quite grim. So count me in. <laughs> Moving over to indies now. Got a stack. I know it's October. I know it's nearly Halloween. And I know it's going to get grim. But even so, there's a wedge. Vanish issue two comes for you uh, from Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman. Very much a love letter to all things excessive from the 90s and noughties, but goddamn, they do it well. A little bit of class, shall we say, for just a second. You've got Star Trek, a new number one with a new ongoing series. That's quite refreshing, actually, because they keep on peppering you with miniseries after miniseries. It's really quite nice to see Star Trek getting an IDW, getting stuck into a proper ongoing series full on. So, woof. Soulfire, issue number one. Now, this has been a while, but like they, Aspen, are doing brand new Soulfire material. I think it's been several years but they're very much back with a bang. 
as is this Rick and Morty issue 100 very much a celebratory issue um, if you've even ever seen a sniff of the show you know exactly what to expect here absolutely barminess as only these two can do and now I'm going to go a little bit more left field bear with me just one by one by one Eternal Descent is a love letter to all things heavy metal and demons of the night all wrapped up into one by Opus Publishing now these guys have been smashing it on the music adaptations ish recently They've done so many. They've done the Evanescence, they've done the Disturbed, etc., etc. They keep on going as well. Cradle of Filth, I think, is also out this week. This looks fantastic. You're dealing with a lot more fictional heavy metal. I know all heavy metal is somewhat fictional, but the bands within this are very much creative exclusively for the Eternal Descent story. So where that's going to go now, I don't quite know. Creep Show number one came and went in a bang, taking in a load of new number one second prints this week so get your paws on those if you need one because issue one went so quickly issue number one second print was one of the highest selling pre-orders we had this week that was huge that is out now this week again if you need it the second time round, as is issue two more horror okay vault are incredible i think anyone who's ever read a vault book at this point chime in but they've also got a horror imprint called nightfall which is where they've put some of their big guns from their big horror books the plots autumnal they're teaming up on this, which is kind of like a double whammy of all things horror. It looks so good and so dark and just a really big, beautiful prestige one shot. 64 pages, feels delicious. In addition to this, there's also two extra prestigious one shot exclusive kind of like hardcover, softcover covers. Can you say they're like, they're not even prestige paper, they're nearly hardcovers, they're so thick. Obviously, I can't quite get that across to you in the video, but just trust me when I say they are excellently thick, very cool. Now we're going to go super dark for a second, so this won't be for everyone. Um, this was one of the highest selling pre-order books we had this week called Lovesick. This is not for the faint of heart, and I know I'm normally full of hyperbole and exaggeration and red ball in these videos, but trust me when I say Lovesick is genuinely a very, very dark book, okay? Um, I read it this morning, it stuck with me all day, and it's not a pleasant read, it's genuinely awful and it's beyond grim and it deals with some really quite nasty stuff in a very well done way. It's psychological horror, it's abject horror at its best or worst depending on what way you want to talk, look at it. So do not go into this one just expecting a light, somewhat charming horror read. It will, for lack of a better phrase, it will fluff you up. It's grim. If that does sound like your cup of tea, get in there quickly because this won't be around for very long. This is absolutely a hot book right now and why we do pre-orders really. So if you miss it, we will try and get more in. Uh, but again, yeah, 18 plus on that one, folks. Definitely not one for the youngsters, alrighty. Damn them all. It's still not one for the youngsters, but very much more back in an exhilarating tone now because the preceding one was just overwhelmingly grim. Here you've got Charlie Adlard and Simon Spurrier giving you all things Hellblazer. That isn't Hellblazer. Um, Ellie is very much an occultist for hire. She's her dad was a famous occultist. He has somewhat sadly passed away and all the demons of hell have been unleashed now. So we're definitely back in somewhat more Constantinian territory. This looks rocking. Charlie Adlard is illustrating this. And if you've never heard of Charlie Adlard, he illustrated famously The Walking Dead. And if you've never read that, then trust me when I say that man is a dude that can draw up there with the best of them. He's awesome. This will be grim. She's going to use everything from holy water or on that particular page, a hammer, to get the job done. But yeah, 72 demons of the Yars go Isha are unleashed. It's her job to sort that all out. Just want to show you this super quickly before I get into covers of the week, because that's the Danny Strips variant, which just tickled me. Super simple, but really works. And I don't know. Um, right, covers of the week. We've got Art Germ doing that all the way back on much more lighter territory now on Judgment Day. This is gorgeous. This is a Detective Comics cover, just a regular one. Uh, that is by Evan Cagle. I'm going to move that a little bit closer. Hopefully the camera will pause on that because the detail in that is sumptuous. Now then, we've got, we're back in Becky Clunan territory. That is Damn Them All. She's done the Virgin cover for that. Punchline has a Rose Pesh cover, which I really like actually. Very playful. But I'm going to give it to this for me this week, partly because I'm a Mr. Freeze pervert and also because I think... Dan Simmons is uh, Martin Simmons or Dan Simmons? Martin. Martin. Thank you, sir. Martin Simmons can do that, which is yes. That's all for this week, folks. Catch you in a bit.